G'day guys, welcome to another weekly developer update. This is CW and joining once again we have Joe. How are you mate? Uh, doing well, doing well. Another exciting week in crypto. Uh, obviously we've seen uh, the difficulty side of things and we um, had the discussion around EIP 37 and now we've seen some reference clients come out. Yeah, we have uh, pushed a reference client 4.0.1 for everybody out there that uh, needs to upgrade. Um, if you're running a full node wallet or uh, Satergo or your solo mining, uh, be sure to update your infrastructure because things could change. Uh, we did have a reference client 4.0.103 that uh, allowed uh, voting to start a little bit uh, premature relative to uh, what we previously thought was possible. So voting's already live and this video comes out sunday so we'll see where things land on sunday um you know hopefully this message isn't a little bit too late in terms of updating infrastructure but if it is get on top of it um because yeah things are subject to change yeah most definitely and what are the sort of numbers that we're looking at here in regards to the voting so what do we actually need to see happen so the scanner is going to scan every uh 128 blocks and we need to clear a threshold of 90% uh, of 256 blocks, which is 232. Uh, there was a little bit of discussion in terms of why voting was compressed, because usually it is uh, 1,024 blocks. And, you know, based on the slow block time and the difficulty, 256 lands actually a little bit above what would be estimated in normal. Um, time. So it kind of gives miners the same overall voting time period in terms of the threshold, but less blocks. But it does seem like uh, the majority anyway is uh, supporting. So we'll see how things come in. Yep, most definitely. And there's a website that's been put up. It's um, on sigmaspace.io, I believe. Uh, so we'll chuck the link down below if you want to monitor that. And uh, yeah, by the time this video is released, we'll see where we're at. Yeah. All right, well, let's jump into the weekly developer update. So to kick things off, we have Green Hat. Do you want to take that one? Sure. So Green Hat and the Sigma Rust team, uh, they've been working uh, to upgrade uh, the Oracle pool framework. Uh, looks like they've uh, split a uh, pull request in the wallet and node parts for um, two separate patches. And upgrades. Uh, they've made the next bootstrap operation on testnet and fixed building the contract and parameters for the Oracle core. Uh, while running the Oracle core, they found a data point publish uh, hitting uh, double spending error. So they're working to fix that, which is good to see. It's part of just the testing process. Uh, next, they're going to continue with Oracle pool two testing, uh, the current progress towards the release is tracked on their roadmap and they dropped a link to it. So everybody that's interested, feel free to hop on Discord and open that link. Uh, besides that, looks like they're trying to carve out some time uh, to look into C threshold polynomial check and the multi-sig prover error that uh, he's been playing with. So a lot of testing in Sigma Rust at the moment. <laughs> yep, great to see. So scrolling down. A uh, little update here from Pragmaxine. So it's released U Explorer version with Docker Compose deployment. Uh, so that's version 0.2.3. And they are uh, cooperating with a non BR uh, on GraphQL integration. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Starfelger. So it looks like uh, last week, the wallet app 2.1.2218 was released and published on GitHub and Google Play Beta. Uh, Terminus Test Flight is going to be released soon. Uh, in terms of the Mosaic framework, uh, the responsive grid implementation is done on all platforms, uh, implementing an NFT marketplace simple app, thanks to Sky Harbor uh, for supporting them uh, with the API so that a sample will be complete and ready to use. 
uh, when the Sky Harbor Marketplace is finished. Uh, while implementing the Marketplace, it looks like they ran into some problems with Mosaic when fetching a lot of images at once. Uh, so he implemented improvements and a fix for the iOS compiler, uh, which also made maintainers uh, and some improvements uh, regarding image displaying and loading. It's still something that looks like they're working out. Um, on the app kit, uh, implemented AGUSD swap supporting chain transactions and improved its behavior regarding box use. So it now pays fees from the receipt when redeeming. And actually, I do think, I'm not sure if this is later in the day, but I do think that uh, ErgoPay is going to be implemented into... Um, Spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing yeah. to see, uh, obviously, being able to sort of uh, create your swaps on, on your mobile device. Yeah, that's going to be a big improvement in terms of the user experience. Yeah. A lot of the people in the um, crypto scene are still... The majority of this sort of work on, on a mobile phone. Uh, I myself, I find it really sort of cumbersome. Um, like you keep saying, big hands, little buttons. Uh, yeah. yeah I'd, I'd prefer um, desktop, but that's just my own preference. But to be able to have um, a mobile solution there, it's fantastic. So scrolling down, we have PGR456 and sigmaspace.io. Like we mentioned in the um, in the introduction, so they've implemented a tracker for the ERP thirty seven activation, which is votes.sigmaspace.io. If you want to see where the votes are up to, head over there. Uh, added for each block which pool mined it, and added information for voting that hasn't started yet, uh, which in this case it has. This was a uh, sort of prior to that release of one point of four point zero point one oh three. Uh, so sigmaspace.io, um, still working on the UI implementation, which they've shown in last week's update. And then on the back, on the back end, um, all the nodes have been updated to 4.0.1. So it's ERP37 ready. Next up, we have Lua Batra. All right. So starting with uh, Paideia, not much interesting to say other than work, work, work. <laughs> a lot of time is spent on off-chain code. Uh, anyone eager to be a dev, remember, an extended UTXO, 90% of the work is done off-chain. Yeah. Uh, the Demo Web 2.0 uh, is even sooner than last week, so it's in progress. Uh, with ErgoPad, they wanted to let everybody know that uh, their nodes have been updated and are EIP 37 ready. The Ergo Tipper Bot, uh, the node is EIP37 ready. I uh, created a repo. Uh, people can PR their token requests. So the process is a bit more transparent. And requests don't get lost in the DMs. So if you're interested in having your token or uh, project supported, um, hop on the GitHub. Uh, there's a link right there. Uh, leave a PR, your token information, and we should be able to get that up. Uh, Ergo diff looks like you made a rookie mistake and only included seven uh, epochs in the diff prediction that's now fixed. However, EIP 37 will probably be activated. So it looks like he'll have to readjust it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he made a nice tool um, for miners to be able to track the uh, diff adjustment. And it looks like he gets to now remake that same tool, but <laughs> great to see. Yeah, uh, just to sort of clarify on that, um, it spans over eight epochs, not the the seven that he's got included there. But yeah, like he does mention, uh, once it's implemented, it needs to be shortened and uh, the block times and everything else like that, because I think it's uh, calculated over the last 64 blocks, something along those lines. Uh, so next up, we have Captain Nemo and Nautilus. So in the case of transaction broadcasting failure, it now retries with uh, alternative GraphQL instances, uh, fixed minor UI issues, and the DAP connector accepts multiple target assets on get UTXOs. So it's currently under private testing by the spectrum.fi team. And then on to fleet, they've added a context uh, ejector onto output builder added standardized inputs, data inputs, and outputs 
collection models, added unified, un added undefined amount support for selection targets. So I've got a big white light here and the, the glare's coming off my glasses. Uh, fixed address encoding issues uh, when using a hex string encoded uh, public key as input and fixed duplicate inputs uh, selection issue on a, a cumulative selection strategy. Finally got that one out. Uh, next up we have MHS. All right, so Rosenbridge, it looks like the soft launch is in progress. Uh, it started the day of the weekly update, which was Wednesday. Uh, in the coming days, uh, he'll report the progress and details. It will take a few days to deploy and launch everything. Uh, it will be on both the Ergo and Cardano main nets, uh, but start using test tokens for now. It will be a few watchers and guards that are all basically controlled by the testing team. After a few days of testing, um, They'll onboard some watchers and guards uh, from other entities and let those watchers and guards uh, take part in the tests. A lot of uh, improvements and fixes are necessary on the current implementation. However, the launch is not dependent on them, so uh, they'll do that in parallel uh, when the test bridge is deployed. Uh, all bridge tokens are test tokens and will be burnt after the soft launch period. So there's not really moving value. They're just moving test tokens and burning them and making sure that uh, their framework is working as intended. And it looks like the remaining unpublished GitHub repos will be updated soon. So everybody can have the benefit of uh, open source code and look into it if they want to take it apart, see how it works. Awesome yeah. to see. Yeah, most definitely. I think uh, you can tell by the uh, the reactions or the emojis underneath there that the community is pretty excited to see this one come to life. Yeah, that little flashy one's funny. <laughs> so next up we have Morphic. And then on the Sigma side, there's an important milestone. So uh, the Scripto library is successfully cross-compiled to JavaScript together with all the test suites. Uh, this brings ABL tree operations and serialization to JavaScript. So with all the upstream Sigma dependencies now that also now support JavaScript, I think that's pretty big. Mm -hmm. And then on to the Sigma code refactoring towards uh, Scala.js compilation. They translated all the remaining code, a uh, Java code to Scala. I finished the JavaScript implementation of the SHA-256 and Blake-2B uh, encryption so that's uh, also used in the scripto.js and then on the misc side of things the security audit of wallet app 2.1.2218 proposed new algorithms for the difficulty adjustment and uh, discussions in discord with various reviews uh, so next up uh, just finish the sigma.js and next up apex theory all right so apex has been uh, working on Per peer rules for incoming transactions and should uh, have some progress to share by this weekend. Nice to see. And next up, Ergo Design and Ergcube. So implemented, uh, implementing YouTube API to grab the content directly, uh, working on uh, their own recorded videos. And then on a UI update, there is a day night mode for all the night hours out there. Uh, next up, we have uh, Alex. All right. So Alex has been working a lot on the node. Uh, he released 4.0.46 with some old PRs included, as well as one uh, fix for a case when the mempool uh, spent a lot of CPU power to process chain transactions. Then obviously he got sidetracked and dove into EIP 37. Uh, he re released 4.0. Point one zero zero uh, with the EIP thirty seven implementation and activation. Then he released four point zero point one oh one, uh, which released uh, for auto voting. So pools uh, that wanted to support it could run that client version and wouldn't have to mess with uh, the activation. Then he uh, finished checking historical blocks with the five point oh interpreter. Um, 
now he also has released 4.0.102 and 103. Uh, with 103, I uh, found out you can scan and start uh, voting basically at the block height that was initially proposed when uh, 4.0.100 came out. Um, and on other matters, as though that's not enough, uh, he's been auditing uh, Dexy contracts, uh, made a public group to dis discuss Dexy. We did have a uh, little contest that we put out there um, for designers to submit uh, logos for Dexy. Um, one nice thing about a uh, community, you know, that is active is we're, we've gotten quite a few submissions and we'll put up a some kind of a web polling mechanism where everybody can go on and vote and look at all of the different uh, submissions and then we'll pick a winner. Uh, looks like next he's working on a detailed description uh, for EIP 37 voting, which I believe is on the forum. Uh, then back to the node 5.0 interpreter uh, and testing the release on 5.0. Also, get, uh, he's going to reset the current test net to uh, pain net, which is a hilarious name, I think. Yeah, <laughs> that's a funny one because uh, obviously with your testing, uh, things can kind of make go awry at times. But yeah, I think it could be quite a fitting name at times. Uh, always busy, that one. Uh, hard to keep him out of everything. Uh, next up, we have uh, QX and his update for my.ergoport.dev. So created a new block found uh, change status alert for get block. Uh, so the ergo port channel will be notified every time a new block's found in the get box sub pools. I'll also notify when a block changes status. So verify and confirming confirmed processing and paid. And then he's currently working uh, to make this a DM as well for people who solo mine. Uh, created an API to output Spectrum LP holders data for an LP conversion to the token that they're providing LP for. Uh, also created uh, created it to extract LP data from MinSwap. So from the Cardano side of things. Uh, so that also uh, lets projects count LP holders uh, when snapshots of tokens. So Neta, for example, are taken for governance purposes. A nice little screenshot there of what he's implemented. And next up, uh, another update here from MHS. So it looks like MHS has been uh, pretty active on the forum. Uh, he posted sponsored staking ERG and token emission to loyal miner in the forum. Uh, please take a look and join the discussion. Some high level ideas he's trying to and I put out there, debate, discuss, uh, figure out what's the best path forward. The profit sharing DAP uh, is actually supporting any token, uh, but not ERG itself. However, there is a wrapping contract that locks ERG and creates ERG token. So the profit sharing DAP already supports ERG token and that's enough. Um, so it looks like in, for uh, potential profit sharing purposes, you know, we'll have a wrapped version of uh, ERG with that application. He started to investigate and design um, necessary contracts to provide additional requirements for the uh, proposal, which is option three that he put on um, the forum. So it looks like uh, exploring potential DeFi uses with uh, the profit sharing DAP. Yeah, if you want to join in that conversation, there's the links there to the Ergo Forum. Uh, on to Anon BR. So on his side, uh, currently working on Sigma.js. So it has the JavaScript uh, SECP 256K1 elliptic curve facade implementation. Uh, and then on the U Explorer, discussing with Prag Maxime the best way to have transparent support for Cassandra a Cassandra schema on the Ergo GraphQL server. And MHS, once again, another one. Yeah, yeah so uh, aside from Rosen and the profit sharing DAP and uh, working on Rappel, he's also uh, helped with the Stratum server. So it looks like there was a weird bug that was a miscalculation in the Vardiff adjustment that's been fixed. 
it looks like it was pr- pretty weird and kind of strange that nobody had run into that before. So a uh, special shout out to a solo miner, Babblefish24, for finding it and reporting it. Uh, if anybody out there in the ecosystem, you know, runs into these issues, uh, feel free to, you know, to hop on Discord. Uh, let the developers know. We'll dig into it and see if we can sort it out. So thank you, Babblefish. Yeah, and that's the thing as well with the community because more often than not, it's hard to sort of stay across everything in the ecosystem. So it takes uh, the, the community to, to report such issues. So uh, thank you very much for that one. A little comment here from Alex. I say thanks to the blow, slow blocks. Uh, there's now also some very old issues in the sync and mempool that are clearly visible. So he's fixing that up. Yeah. And then on to another BTC, so WMC Clinton. So it's continuing uh, in-house testing of their Mint, Redeem, and Relay smart contracts and fixed a few vulnerabilities with authentication timeframes in the protection protection script, continued development of their in-house testing for the full protocol. So the UI is being integrated with the backend, uh, Nautilus and Bitcoin payments, and also the smart contracts. And also continued development on their on-chain SPC F- SPV verification smart contract, uh, which nearly onboarded uh, an Ergo developer and starting creating a new series of test cases for verification and relay smart contract protection scripts. Uh, scrolling down, we have Lowkey Nerd. All right, Blitz. Uh, looks like their website is going to be updated with user account creation and Nautilus wallet association. Uh, that's exciting because it means that uh, they can start to test the in-game query and Polo users' card tokens when uh, they're starting, which is necessary to accurately display their cards in-game. Uh, card artwork reached the 40% complete milestone of 170 cards total. Uh, we've started the player versus player matchmaking development as well. It's great to see. Yep, most definitely. Moving on, we have LEPDWL and Blobstopia. So they progressed on the PVE event, uh, got stuck on a transaction signed, uh, but producing an error once sent to the node. So I'll wait for a better block time to continue the debugging on that one. And then on to ErgoHack, uh, started a project for the ErgoHack to allow NFT minters to choose the first digits of their token ID through a mineable smart contract. That's interesting. Right. Yeah, it is. Moving on, uh, Liquid Phase and Swamp Audio. All right, so Swamp Audio has released smart contracts for mutual release agreement. Uh, they dropped their GitHub link. Uh, the contract allows multiple users to deposit multiple works to a bootstrap contract until the bootstrap receives all of the work mentioned in its generation parameters. Once the bootstrap receives the work, it locks to a second stage sale agreement contract where value is dictated during the bootstrap contract generation. Uh, until the time the bootstrap receives all the mentioned works, the contract will be nullified by users withdrawing from the bootstrap. Uh, the works can be put into and removed from the sale agreement based on specific parameters being met. This may now be considered a viable contract under media publishing contract law as the work now has assigned our assignment provision that can be protected by a given party in the case of unforeseen happenings. Uh, the NFT sales on other chains until this point have not met the assignment provision uh BAYC lawsuits are proof of that. And so I hope that this contract format gives legitimate businesses and contractors a way to enter uh, agreements to distribute media while still having a assigned trusted party for legal reasons. Nice to see. Yeah, covering all of their bases there. Yeah. And a comment here just from Loki Nerd on that uh, wants to make uh, the Blitz kit completely open source and provide their assets, so art, music, etc., to other creators for free, assuming uh, they agree to reference their token structure in uh, the eventual game when relevant. 
So maybe there's some mutual interest between that goal and the efforts uh, that was just mentioned above. Nice. Uh, just a little comment here from Fanta. So the node index is essentially complete. I uh, just has to fix uh, the order of transactions and boxes in addresses uh, because it differs from the Explorer. And moving on, we have Jenny. Jenny's made the developer update. So she's just a nice little reminder here that the Ergo hack registration um, is still ongoing. It'll still be open by the time this video is released. So by all means, if you have any ideas, uh, jump on to ergohack.io. Uh, for more details, you can check out the prize pools, the dates, uh, and then ultimately register your project uh, on the website. So scrolling down, we have Cheese Enthusiast. All right, get block update. Looks like uh, he was working on making a new sub pool and I uh, had to do a quick pivot to start re-implementing proof of vote now that uh, EIP 37 is out. Uh, looks like on the layer two, he's going to continue work once the hackathon begins. You know, uh, get block has done a uh, great work in terms of giving their miners a say. And, uh, you know, we did, I'm just going to say we kind of rugged their their stuff by uh, pushing, you know, uh, EIP 37 out so quickly. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, I kind of have to apologize to their team for that. Uh, it's always better to do things a little bit cleaner and less messy, but here we are. Um, so I know that they've rolled out their proof of vote. People are already voting. Um, it's the only pool that, that uh, has that type of transparent voting mechanism, which uh, personally I'm a huge fan of. So, yeah. So basically, if you're not aware of what that actually is, uh, if you're mining to one of their sub pools, they'll distribute a governance token uh, for the voting rights. And basically, you submit that token to an address and whichever way the, the vote uh, comes through, uh, the, the pool itself will vote in favour. So it's basically a simple majority, but every miner has a say in which way they want to see that. Next up, we have... Ilya from the Spectrum team. So just on the Explorer itself, so HTTP uh, requests caching has been fixed up or addressed. And then on to Spectrum itself, I'll just bring that one up. So a lot of things have happened over the past week. So if you're not aware, they actually got funded in the uh, round nine of the Catalyst funding. So congratulations for that uh, and uh, everyone who voted for their project. So just on the spectrum.network side, the peer connection handler implementation, um, a component which handles individual connections with the peers. So e.g. the protocol uh, upgrade negotiations, message handling, et cetera. There's a PR there, so follow the link if you want to have a look at that one. And then on to the DEX itself. So the core, uh, the Plutus pool contract has been updated. It's added support for inline datums. And then there's a JavaScript SDK for liquidity mining pools on Ergo. Off-chain on the Cardano side, they added support for inline datums. So the testing phase is currently underway. On the front end, they started testing the read-only wallet. It can be used to view addresses and balances without an extension and a work in progress. So Ergo Pay integration uh, with the mobile app, Cardano Bazil, uh testnet and pool an analytics is currently underway and the product system design changes are happening. A couple of bugs fixed. So the Nautilus wallet uh, bug fix, they now account the balance is not according to the UTX of a wallet, but it takes directly from the get balance method. So thank you very much for that. And uh, like we mentioned earlier as well, that we have the um, Ergo Pay integration, which is fantastic. Yeah. So next up we have Bulb. All right. I haven't seen uh, Bulb around. Great to have a new developer with us. Uh, looks like he's working uh, on building a library on top of Sigma Rust uh, for easily creating transactions in Rust. So new SDK in development. Awesome. Yep. Jump onto there and uh, check out Rustkit. 
So another new one, Pulsars. So started yesterday building an alternative explorer front end in Blazor. So that's utilizing the new GraphQL server. Uh, no promises yet that this will become actually useful. So thanks for jumping in and having a bit of a tinker. Yeah, that's the best place to start, you know. And sometimes things that uh, don't seem that useful, you know, end up being pretty great. So I'm excited yeah. to see where that goes. Most definitely. Uh, scrolling down, we have a non-real. All right. So it looks like uh, they've released the IDO landing page for the auction house token. Uh, you can check out the uh, link that he's dropped. Uh, he's released their white paper. Uh, check it out. Um, so those of you that are interested, hop in to Discord and click those links. It uh, looks like you move the backend and ergo node servers to a new well-designed, more secure cloud network, which allows uh, them to scale Ergo House's backend API uh, whenever it's needed. It also disables unintentional access uh, to their mainnet and testnet nodes. Security configurations and firewalls are done. Uh, they are preparing to test the auction house on testnet. The backend is set up, working on its front end and connecting them. Extensive testing will be done before the release of Auction House V3. Uh, improved auction and artwork cards, making them simpler and more responsive. Uh, their UI designer has designed a new comprehensive search and filter section for artwork. Uh, users will be able to use various criteria, such as price, currency, collection, and artwork traits uh, to seek the artworks that they want. The implementation is being done on the front end side uh, for Ergo team, caught up with some great articles about decentralization and DAOs and their trade-offs, doing some more research to make sure uh, their design is suitable for different degrees of decentralization is needed. So that's an exciting tool as well. Yeah, definitely. That's a pretty significant update actually. And I look forward to see uh, the new version of the auction house come out because uh, there has been some issues just around uh, the minting and um, and buying uh, sort of undesirable artworks, I might just say that. So there's quite a few fakes, so you have to check the minting addresses and all kinds of bits and pieces. So to see um, a lot of the, this work going into that uh, to address that side of it, so it's really big for the community. Yeah, it is. It is. Nobody wants to buy something that's fake, you know. Okay. Uh, Alex here is just reaching out to an Unreal, Louis and MHS Sam. So can they use the Ergo team so for the profit sharing DAP or Padilla for controlling the funds of his uh, decentralized grid trading uh, proposal that he put up on the Ergo forum? So that's pretty interesting also. Uh, so scrolling down, we have uh, Chris Ray from Excel. I said no solid updates this week for Excel. The backend team has SLT ready and waiting for the front end to integrate it. Uh, backend is testing and tweaking other code. Uh, they'll be using and starting to think about crowdfunding pools. I'm excited to see where that goes. Yeah, most definitely. All right, I think that wraps up the developer update for this week. So. Um, some pretty significant ones there. Uh, obviously, MS Chess and his team has been pretty busy. Uh, multiple updates in that one, but one that I'm one thing I'm looking forward to is sort of seeing uh, Rosen on mainnet and see how it all interacts with the test tokens and everything that comes to life on that side. Yeah, man, Ergo Hack is coming, right? That's uh, just what I need to you know move past all the difficulty <laughs> adjustments and voting, and you know we'll get past that. Things will. Uh, equalize and then we'll move forward as a community right and hopefully uh we take some of the lessons that we learned from you know challenges that present themselves and we do better in terms of planning ahead having contingencies in place and uh ecosystem gets stronger that's uh you know part of life you learn right yeah exactly and i think it's a bit of a highlight also that there isn't like a um sort of develop a dictatorship on Ergo. Like the devs do play a, a significant role, but also the community does also. If uh, miners see anything that they want to see change, create an EIP or start the discussion, bring it to sort of developers' attention and um, 
if you're not sort of listen, listen to on the first front, by all means, sort of to drive that um, drive that point across because uh, ultimately it's a decentralized ecosystem and everyone's words valued. Yeah. Awesome. And on, on to Ergo Hack, uh, just one final comment on that one. Uh, like I touched on uh, with Jenny's comments and what Joe just touched on, head over to ergohack.io. Um, registrations close on the 3rd of October. So I think it's on the Monday after this video is released. And uh, if you've got any proposal, it doesn't have to have any, you don't have to have any developer knowledge. It can just start with an ID, jump into the um, incubator channel on Discord and, and discuss and create a team. Um, who knows where it'll take you. So uh, there's some pretty nice prizes there available. Um, by all means, jump in and register and uh, see what happens. Yep. Have a good week, everybody. Definitely. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in once again to the Weekly Developer Update. Have a good one. Mm-hmm.